Hi guys, in this video we're going to go through three completing the square questions. So we're going to do three examples in each one. We're going to complete the square. We are going to find the coordinates of the turning point. We're going to mention whether or not our turning point is maximum or a minimum. And we're also going to mention the maximum or minimum value that these quadratic expressions take. So, Example 1, we've got x squared plus 16x minus 3. So, remember a quadratic with a positive x squared term is a happy quadratic. So it's going to look something like that. The reason that we complete the square is to find the coordinates of this point down here. Now, when we've got the coordinate is called the minimum. So, it's the smallest possible value on the y-axis that the graph can take. So, how do we find it? Well, we complete the square. So, remember, completed square form looks like this. x minus a squared plus b. So, if ever you are given a quadratic and asked to write it in that form, you are being asked to complete the square. So, how do we do that? Well, we set ourselves up with a pair of brackets. We've got a single x squared, which is good. We need that. So we put a single x inside of the brackets with a square on the outside. For now, we'll keep that minus 3 on the outside. Okay, so now what we do, whatever number is multiplying the x term, we half that and we put it inside of the brackets with the x. So half of 16 is 8. So we get x plus 8 all squared minus 3, but we're not quite there yet. This number that we put inside the brackets with the x, uh, we square it and then take it away on the outside. So 8 squared is 64. So on the outside, we have to subtract 64. So our final completed square form is x plus 8 squared minus 3 minus 64. So minus... 67. So the coordinates of the turning point. Well, the x coordinate is always the negative of the number inside the bracket with the x. So we've got x plus 8. The coordinate then will be minus 8. But the y coordinate is just this number on the outside. So if it's positive, the y-coordinate is positive. If it's negative, the y-coordinate is negative. So our y-coordinate is minus 67. So those are the coordinates of the turning point, which here is a minimum. The actual minimum value, if you're asked about that, so the minimum value is just the y coordinate, so minus 67. So that is the smallest value you can get when you substitute x values into the uh, quadratic expression. The smallest value you can get is minus 67. And that happens uh, when x is equal to minus 8. Okay, that's it for our first example. Okay, for example g, we've got minus x squared minus 10x plus 2. So, what's different here is that we have a negative x squared. So, that gives us an unhappy quadratic. So, when we're completing the square, again we're finding the coordinates of the turning point. This time, 
it's called Maximum. So it's the greatest possible point on the y-axis that the curve will reach. So we're finding the coordinates of that point or the maximum, the biggest number that this expression can uh, take when we substitute x values into it. So we've got a bit of a problem. Uh, first, because to be able to complete the square, you need to have a single positive x squared term. So we do have a single x squared, but it's negative. So to get around that, we play a little bit of mouse magic. We factorize. So we factor out minus one. So what happens then if we take out a factor of minus one, everything that was negative becomes positive. Everything that was positive becomes negative. So, inside our big square brackets, we will have x squared plus 10x minus 2. Now, inside of the square brackets, we now have our single positive x squared. So, inside the square brackets, we can complete the square as normal. So, Keeping this minus 1 on the outside, we want a pair of brackets with a square on it. Uh, we'll keep the minus 2 here for now. So, we've got plus 10x, half of 10 is 5. So we get x plus 5 squared. Now we square this 5, which is 25, and take it away on the outside. So that goes there. Don't forget to close your square brackets. So we've got minus 1, lots of x plus 5 squared, uh, minus t, minus 25, which is minus 27. And then finally, as our last step, we now expand the big square brackets. Let that minus 1 back in. So we will get minus x plus 5 squared. So the minus cannot make its way inside of that bracket. That power of 2 acts like a little bouncer. So there's no mate, you're not coming in. Uh, but then what it will do is multiply the minus 27 and turn it into positive 27. So that is this quadratic incomplete square form. The coordinates of the maximum are then going to be, well, we've got x plus 5 inside the brackets. So the x coordinate is minus 5. And then the y coordinate is positive 27. So that's the coordinates of our maximum or turning point. The maximum value of the expression again is just the y coordinate it's 27 so the biggest value this expression can take when we substitute in values of x is positive 27 okay so on to our third and final example for this video if you want any more examples on completing the square there's loads more in my completing the square playlist which i'm putting a link to in the description box down below this video so make sure you check those out in particular this type of question when we have a coefficient attached to the x squared term that is not equal to one if these come up you could very easily get four marks for it so this time then we've got 2x squared minus 8x plus 1 so, it's a happy quadratic again. So, when we complete this square, we're finding this point, which will be a minimum turning point. So, the problem that we've got is that we've got this 2x squared instead of just a single x squared. Now, 
I used to back in the day just create my cells an equal zero and then divide the two away which you're not allowed to do it's naughty you can't just turn an expression into an equation like that so don't do that what we want to do is factorize again so we're going to factor out this factor of two and this comes out of all three terms so make sure when you factor out you are dividing everything by 2. So we're putting a 2 on the outside of a big set of square brackets. So we're going to get a single x squared. We're going to get minus 4x. And we're going to get plus 1 half at the end. So make sure you divide everything by 2. Okay. So now inside the big square brackets. We can complete the square as normal now. So we want x. Half of minus 4 is minus 2. So we can get x minus 2 squared like that. And then we've still got plus 1 half. Now you might think here yeah, well, why we got a minus 2 inside the bracket. So do we now add 4 on the outside? The answer is no. So, what we're doing, we're squaring minus 2. Minus 2 squared is positive 4. So, we still minus 4 on the outside, like that. Whenever you are completing the square, you always minus this number on the outside. It's never an addition, unless you're playing A level and we've got imaginary numbers. But, hopefully most of you right here are playing GCSE. So don't worry about that. Okay, so that's what we've got at the moment. So we've got two lots of x minus two squared. Now we've got one half minus four. So it might be easy for you if you want to convert these two things into decimals. So one half is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 minus four is minus 3.5 so and our final step is to let the 2 back inside the big square brackets so we get 2 lots of x minus 2 squared uh, and then 2 times minus 3.5 gives us minus 7 so that is this quadratic incomplete square form. The coordinates of the minimum are going to be, oh, we've got an x minus 2 inside the bracket. So the negative of minus 2 is positive 2. And the y coordinate is going to be minus 7. And the minimum value of this expression again is just the y coordinate so it's minus seven like that okay guys so as i said if you want any more examples on completing the square check out my playlist which is linked down below this video in the description take care